Hello, nice to have you here again. Today we are gonna plan my December setup together and today's video is sponsored yet again by Hohuhu. Thank you so much. Are we really planning the last month of 2022? Well, I feel like this year went by so fast. But lately I've been saying this every time. I think that as soon as I stopped being a student, going to school, going to uni, etc etc, the days end so quickly. I admit that looking back at me student, each day felt like an eternity. Let me know if you resonate with my words. Anyway, I started planning this theme in my head at the start of November. Even though I ended up filming this video on the 23rd of November, but I knew that this month would have been so so hectic, so I wanted to be at least mentally prepared. I tried to include some festive spirit without being too obvious. This is why I used some well-known colors such as green and red, but toned it down and used them as a secondary palette, while giving more attention to pinks and yellows. As you can probably tell already, my main focus for this theme is my little gingerbread man. Again, a subject associated with the holidays but not Christmas. I know lots of people don't celebrate Christmas for any reasons, and to be honest, I am not a fan myself. I love the vibes, I love the coziness, but I'm not crazy about it. Since these are quite busy moments, personally and working-wise, I went for simple layouts. I cut down the quote page and replaced it with a small calendar spread. I definitely included less pages than normal, this way I can still journal but not being overwhelmed and lose the focus on other things that I need to take care of. Do you want to know some fun facts about me and my relationship with my December themes? Well, I have never been fully happy about any of my December setups. I don't know what it is, but none of them makes me proud like any other themes I do during the years. Maybe I put the pressure since it's the last theme of the year. Maybe because it's difficult to do something totally not related to the season and this narrows down the possibility a lot or maybe it's just a curse. I'm sure you're wondering right now if this applies also to the theme I'm making right now. Well, partially. I'm really happy with the subject I went for but I'm not satisfied by the way I portray it. There's something that I feel it's missing, something that I could have done better, but it's too late and I will try to work harder on the future pages of this setup, such as my weeklies and extra ones I can do. If you are interested, you can follow me on Instagram where I actually share all the extra spreads in format of photos or videos. I will leave my handle in the description box. I know that it is not ideal to complain about something that I'm showing you, but I just wanted to be honest with you. Having a bullet journal comes with ups and downs, and it's not possible to be always on top of it. But the beauty of it is that the next month you can start fresh and learn from your mistakes, if you make any. I planned next theme last month, since it was created to be made for December but I had to change plans along the way, so I'm really excited for that and I can wait for January to arrive. The holidays are approaching, how are you gonna spend your time? If you are a student, are you gonna enjoy some time off or return home? If you work, do you have some days off and plan a mini vacation? I am self-employed, so I don't really know what I'm gonna do. Me and boyfriend will leave a couple of days for the new year and spend it in another city. We are going to Turin. Turin? I don't know. Well, Torino. I never ever visited the city before, so I'm really excited because I don't know what to expect. We will behave like tourists and visit many places, eat lots of delicious food and stay cozy. I used to go party for the new year, but I'm way over the phase of my life. Now I just want to relax and enjoy the little things. Yes, I'm 26. I know that lots of people my age still love to go clapping, having parties, etc. But I think I did my part when I was younger and I don't see the enjoyment anymore. Sometimes it's good to have fun and let yourself go, 
but generally speaking, I prefer a slow life. What do you think? Which type of person are you at this moment of your life? It's really strange because people around my age can be in moments of their life so different from one another. You see couple being married, people having kids, others are still partying every weekend like there's no tomorrow, someone is buying a house, another is still studying. So yeah, it's funny to open your social media and see all these different lifestyles. It was my birthday at the start of the week on the 21st and I decided to go back home and stay with the family. Cause, fun fact, my mom's birthday is just five days pre or mine. So we usually celebrate them together at home. My brother, who is my twin, should have been there to celebrate his birthday, of course, but he couldn't come back and stay in the city where he lives and works. So we are gonna do a proper celebration next time we both go back, which is in a couple of weeks. So yep, we just did something simple. The day before the 21st, a Sunday, we went eat lunch at a super interesting restaurant, me, my boyfriend and my mom, set up like a 50s diner. I know that for you people from the US it may be something silly and the site you are accustomed, but here it's a unique concept. Anyway, we ate delicious food and my boyfriend bought a cake that we ate at home. Nothing fancy, but I prefer this type of celebration than having dozens of people, finding a place where we can all stay, etc, etc. Since I was born on late November, it's difficult to gather lots of people. You can't stay outside since it's freezing cold. I always envied those who were born during summer, especially since we lived by the sea. There were so many options. And usually people are free during summer, so it was not really hard to find a date where everyone was there. You need to know that in Italy, since we are a peninsula, summer is usually the time when people take days off for a vacation. Students don't go to school, primary school, high school, university, etc. So yeah, just wanted to share how I spent my birthday. It's nice to have a little chat and talk about life in general and silly things. My themes are not really complicated, I don't use lots of materials, and my setups are usually similar to each other in structure, so I don't see the need to explain each move I do, second per second, cause you can see and understand really well just by looking at the screen. Of course, if you don't understand something or you're curious about something that I do, you can write in the comments and I will gladly answer, so feel free to do so if you need. So in my last video I asked you to share any questions you may have, because I would have answered them in this plan with me. Someone asked me how I use my expenses trackers. This is a spread that I did since day one of starting my first ever bullet journal, so I'm quite confident. Of course, my life changed quite a bit since that day. I was once a student, then I started working for the first time, then I became self-employed, you know, different phases of your life and different needs. You can use your expenses trackers to note down all the money that flies from your wallet. Usually I write down the place I spent them or the single item that I bought and just beside the amount of money. It's just a place where I can go back and see how and why I spent a certain amount that month. It's definitely useful. For example, if you are on a budget and need to monitor the way you spend what you have or if you have a huge expenses that certain month and you need to be more strict. It's easy to spend money especially with the use of cards and if you buy small things but frequently. Using a tracker helps you break down the way you spend money and hopefully helps you being more mindful the next month if you need so. My mom always told me to write down each time I buy something, since the first day I had my very own money. And I can say that it's really useful. You can try to add one inside your next setup and if you feel like it did nothing for you, you can simply skip it the next month. If you happen to use it, please let me know your experience. Then I was asked if I have any tips with starting a YouTube channel and a small business and to talk about my experience. My advice is to just start, especially with YouTube. You don't need any fancy equipment to have a channel, nor do you need a budget. I just started with my phone and a desk. 
Of course, it depends on the focus you want to have for your channel, but I think you are interested in opening a channel related to art or bullet journal if you are here and you are asking me. As I stated before, you can start journaling with just a pen and some cheap markers, such as Crayola. This is how I did it. We are lucky that all of our phones already have a good camera and a microphone to record. And there are plenty of free editing software such as iMovie if you have a Mac or DaVinci Resolve, Vullo on your phone and many more. The most important thing is your mindset. Don't expect to grow big the day after. I've been here since 2019 and my growth has been quite slow, but each journey is different. So please, don't feel discouraged, you just need to continue doing it if you love it and experiment. My filming style changed a lot during these years. My editing, my content. As per the small business, it's quite a tricky question. I'm not here to tell you that it is easy and you just need to be motivated, but the best advice I can give you is to start small and try to have fun at the beginning. I honestly didn't think at the time that my shop would become my full-time job. I didn't have those expectations. If you base your sole income into a small business, it can be stressful at first. This is why I don't suggest to invest all the money you have or to keep whatever you are doing to pursue this path. Don't believe those TikToks inspiring videos of people throwing everything down the window to start a small business and tell you they have a 6 or 7 figure salary after a year. It's ridiculous to share this message. Maybe it is true for them. Maybe they had the background that could help them in case everything went wrong. They usually don't share the struggles and the behind the scenes. I will take my example to explain it better. I started my shop that I only had an old printer at home that we use by everyone and I only bought the ink, the adhesive paper and Procreate on my phone for 5 years. I didn't have a cutting machine, I didn't have an iPad or Apple Pencil and I cut all the stickers by hand. When I made some sales, I decided to invest a little more and use all my birthday and Christmas presents for the following couple of years to ask help in upgrading my shop like an iPad, a cutting machine, etc, etc. I only started to manufacture outside some of my products this year, because it's not cheap to do so. Your best friends are your social media. Who has money to spend on traditional marketing strategies? Use your social medias to share your shop, your items, your art, let people know you are there. As I stated, it's not easy and not everyone is able to achieve something. I'm not here lying, but the best advice is to start and start small accordingly to your means. I hope I was able to explain myself and answer the questions, but it's really a wide and complicated topic. I think it's time to wrap up this plan with me. I hope you had fun with me chatting all the time and that you enjoy the theme. If you are still here and you are not subscribed, consider doing so to support me as my small channel and to enjoy more content from me. See you next time, bye bye and stay safe!